What's up you guys, my name is Mark and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this super realistic 3D printed Iron Man arc reactor and how you can make one at home too. Let's go. I downloaded these files for free off Thingiverse and we'll have a link in the description below. If you've tuned into this channel before, you know that I'm a sucker for metal 3D printing. So I ordered the majority of these parts from the JLC 3DP website in 3D printed 316 stainless steel. I also ordered a few parts in black and transparent resin. The total cost of these parts was $86, but if all the parts were printed with just resin, it would have only cost $40. It took about three business days for the parts to arrive and they were all packaged really well, as always. I decided to print the main housing of the arc reactor in black resin because it not only helped reduce cost, it will also help reduce the overall weight of the finished product. So I've never worked with 3D printed transparent resin before and one of the things that really surprised me was the clarity. It literally looks like glass and I don't have to do any post-processing on the surface. I'm super happy with how all these parts came out and I can't recommend JLC 3DP enough for all their awesome 3D printing services. I'm starting this build by sanding down all the stainless steel parts. They all have a rough surface finish so I want to sand all that away to get nice shiny pieces. I start by using an 80 grit sanding drum on my Dremel and work all the way up to 600 grit. This is definitely the most labor intensive part of the build but if you don't really care about the final surface finish you can just skip this sanding and move right to the electronics. The electronics for this arc reactor are extremely easy and pretty much anyone can do it if you have a soldering iron and basic soldering skills. For the power source, I purchased this 3.3 volt power supply off Amazon with a standard 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter jack connection. I got matching female sockets to accept the male fittings from the power supply. I also got some white 5 millimeter LEDs and star PCB LEDs. I'll have a link to all the items I purchased in the description below. Before you start soldering stuff together, you're gonna wanna draw out your circuit. This technically isn't how you draw circuits, but for the intensive purpose of this video, I wanted to draw something that the regular person could easily understand. The goal is really just to plan out what you're actually going to solder before you start. I didn't wanna use any resistors, so that's why I got a 3.3 volt power supply instead of a five or 12 volt. You can definitely use a larger power supply, but you'll have to size your resistor to drop to the correct voltage, which is 3.3 volts. After the circuit is all drawn up, it's time to start soldering. I cut up a bunch of small pieces of 26 gauge wire and use them to solder 10 5 millimeter LEDs in parallel. Basically, the positives are connected to the positives and the negatives are connected to the negatives. After the ring of LEDs is complete, I put it into the transparent ring to make sure that everything fits. After that's verified, I solder wires to the positive and negative terminals of the main PCB LED. Once the soldering is complete, I glue the main LED to the 3D printed plastic plate, guide the wires through the two small holes in the middle of the main housing, and screw in the plate using two M3 10mm screws. After that's done, I solder two short wires to the end of the female jack. I use the outer pin on the DC jack as ground and the center pin as the positive term. I screw the jack into the bottom of the main housing and solder the positive and negative wires to the main PCB LED. I connect the positive and negative wires from the main LED to the positive and negative wires coming from the LED ring to check if everything is soldered correctly. If it's all correct, it should light up just like this. I then unsolder the LED ring because those connections will actually prevent me from assembling the rest of the reactor together. But before I can assemble everything else, I need to wrap the wire holders. I wrap each of the 10 wire holders with 20 gauge copper wire. Once they are all wrapped, I solder the wrapped wires together and cut through the solder on the bottom side of the holders. I install the wire holders on the transparent ring and am able to get the LEDs in and out without any issues. Now that that's done, all the parts are prepped and ready for assembly. Here are all the stainless steel parts after I spent the time wet sanding them with 2000 grit sandpaper and polishing them. I also used a gold paint pen to color this middle grate piece. This isn't required, but I wanted my arc reactor to look as movie accurate as possible. The first step of assembly is to install the three steel rings on the bottom of the main housing. All of the steel rings are pressure fit into place and I don't have to use any super glue or anything like that. The second step is to install the transparent resin lens for the main PCB LED. This simply just screws into the main housing. 
The third step is to use two M2 6mm screws to secure the stainless steel support piece to the main housing. After that's secured, the two wires coming from the holes in the main housing can be soldered to the wires coming from the LED ring. Please make sure that the positive is connected to the positive and the negative is connected to the negative. If you switch those up, you will fry all your LEDs. The fourth step is attaching the LED ring to the stainless steel support structure using four M2 6mm screws. The fifth step is to pressure fit the gold painted grate into the middle of the stainless steel support structure. The last step is to use three M3 8mm screws to attach the black ring and circular stainless steel piece to the stainless steel support structure. After the arc reactor was assembled, I went on Thingiverse to download a stand to display it. I printed the stand in black PLA and assembled it using some M3 screws and super glue. I routed the power supply wire through the stand so I could easily plug in the arc reactor while also hiding the cord. After that was complete, I put the arc reactor on the stand, turned it on, and this was the result. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you next time and stay classy.